into the retro. We've all been in that awkward situation where we wanted to socially distance ourselves. We wanted to listen to something personal and of course pass our time in long commutes. In all of these situations, we mostly look towards our phones to provide that entertainment that universally unites us together. Music. Before the portable music players, music was more social. People would walk around with boom boxes, large stereo setups that everyone would dance to. Music was more of a social experience. But things changed in 1979 with the introduction of the Sony Walkman. This thing was iconic as it stripped down all the huge parts of a large stereo system and compacted everything into a small box connected to headphones. This revolutionized the way we listen to music. People would now be able to listen to their personal favorite music on the go. The Sony Walkman was a huge breakthrough. It went on sale on July 1st of 1979 for $150. The device was not particularly advanced. Portable tape recorders had existed for decades, but it was an advance in marketing. The Walkman was not promoted to professional journalists, like most portable tape recorders were at that time. Instead, it was promoted to ordinary customers. When the Walkman was almost at the end of development, there was a problem. The device didn't have a name. Several names were suggested. Walkie was the most popular, but none were as memorable as Walkman. So the name stayed. When the Walkman was announced to the public on June 21st of 1979, the press lampooned it. Some claimed that nobody would be interested in a tape player without a record function. The company was unfazed by such criticism and pushed on with promotions. Sony distributed the player to young people and celebrities around Japan, generating demand. A month after the Walkman became available in Japanese stores, it was sold out. The device was popular among all consumers, not just those under 20. Sony had succeeded at creating a personal audio player and it prepared to launch the product in Europe and North America. In 10 years, Sony sold 50 million units and competitors had sold countless knockoffs. The term Walkman entered our language, used to describe any cassette player and it's also listed in the Oxford English Dictionary. A few years later, in 1984, Sony also released the D50, the first in what came to be known as the Discman line of products. The Discman was pretty much the same concept as the Walkman, only that it played CDs instead of cassettes. As one might expect, this product also proved to be very popular as it allowed for a far more convenient experience when compared to the Walkman's cassettes. After the Walkman and the Discman, it was the time for the portable MP3 players to shine. The first mass-produced MP3 player with flash memory was the MP-Man. The MP-Man was introduced in Asia in 1998, however, the device was very expensive, very inconvenient to use, and generally very restrictive. It was a commercial and critical failure. The first successful portable MP3 player was the Rio PMP300, which debuted only a few months afterwards. The device was cheaper, could easily connect to a computer, and proved to be a success. The Walkman, the Discman, the MP3 player were all a road to the development of the much more iconic the much more successful Apple iPod. The thousand songs in your pocket. Amazing little device holds a thousand songs. And it goes right in my pocket. In 2001, Apple released the first iPod into the wild and practically changed the landscape once again, much as Sony had done back in 1979. The iPod had been an incredibly popular device from the very start and had a huge impact in the industry at large. Users could now load up thousands of songs in a single portable device. This seemingly simple thing, along with the iTunes platform, pretty much propelled the digital music industry forward. It is pretty hard to overstate just how much of an impact the iPod had, especially after 2003 when iTunes was released. And although it only worked with Macintosh in the beginning, Apple did realize that a Windows version would be advantageous, and iPods suddenly reached a much wider audience than before. From there on, there was no looking back. Music was incorporated into cell phones, people were thumping their way to work, listening to thousands of personalized music that suited their tastes, sharing their favorite tunes with their friends and loved ones, and the rest is history. We've really come a long way in terms of how we listen to music. The industry has obviously profited from all this, but people like you and me can listen to millions of songs at the palm of our hands today. Gone are those days of cassettes and tape recorders, which could store merely 10 to 20 songs, Gone are those days where you had to have speakers right up your ears. And gone are those days where you had to buy cassettes and CDs of your favorite album. Even though we've come so far, there's still some magic in those days when everything was not so digital, when everything was retro. 
So the next time you put in your wireless earphones and karaoke your way to work, but your slow internet doesn't load up your favorite music on time, just remember how life was before the dawn of the modern portable music players. Here's a bonus information that will make you appreciate technology even more. Guess the amount of data stored in this large box from 1956. 1 gigabyte? 100 megabytes? Well, if you guessed 5 megabytes, you guessed it right. Let me know in the comments down below what your first portable music player was. Smash the subscribe button if you liked this video. Till then, catch you guys on the next one.